Playing the black pieces, Grandmaster Igor Kenkin has just attacked Bobby Cheng's rook on f1 along the long diagonal with the bishop on a6. In such moments, it's important not to panic. Bobby Cheng with the white pieces chose a very creative idea to keep momentum going for him in this position. What would you play here if you had the white pieces? He breaks in the center as well and, and this is interesting because what he's done is he said well the, the knight on f3 moves. The knight on f3 is moved so now e4 was no longer so well protected. So he was able to utilize the fact that the white knight moved to to try and gain an advantage over the e4 square, e5 square. So Bobby's got to decide here, is he going to allow black to chop on d4, maybe with something like pawn takes pawn, or is he going to allow black to maybe take on d2 and then push through, or is he going to resolve the tension on d2 himself, d e4 himself with say bishop takes nine. First of all, he clarifies the exchange on d5, and this, this makes the pawn structure symmetrical. This forces black basically to capture with a d c6 pawn, or else they'll be material down. So, mm, it's already saying to to the black player with the, the white player, Bobby with the white pieces, is saying. You know, the complications aren't going to get out of hand here. I'm going to make sure that if the pawn structure is symmetrical, I've got good drawing chances. And so Kenkin recaptures. And now Bobby might have to decide what he's going to do about, his, about the tension. He decides, in this case, he's going to move back to e5 and attack the pawn. Interesting move. All right. In fact, he's moved the other knight to... Sorry, moved back to f3, attack the pawn. What am I saying? And he's moved the other knight, which is a good choice, I think. It, it, it limits black's possibilities of swapping. And it, it, it gives one, two, three. It, it's, it, it stops the move from knight takes d4 and e4 being taken. And it's just saying straight away that if you allow me to swap here on e5, you know, white's going to have a have a small small pressure edge against the weak d5 pawn. This is if white captures with the d pawn here. So black has to be a little bit aware of this, and Ken can decide that the way he was going to deal with it was he was going to eliminate on d4 himself. Uh, an interesting decision. I don't say I like it. I, I don't particularly like this decision. I think black's just giving themselves an ice line in it on the D file for no particular reason. Uh, was it unavoidable? I guess it was. So at least this way, by chopping this way, black ensures that if they get F4 in, they're going to get But white has two ways of capturing. Uh, both are probably good. Bishop D4. Bishop takes D4. Or... Knight takes d4. You could capture with the e3 pawn if you're obsessed with drawing, but I don't particularly like it there. I mean, it's not a good decision. You might as well get some advantage against the isolated d pawn by capturing the piece. So, white decides he's going to capture with the bishop on d4, and this is a tempo on the queen. Now, how is black going to respond? We presume it's going to move. So where's the queen going to move to? Well, my idea would be that the queen would probably move to a square like h6. Uh, where else could it move to? I guess it could move to something like just e7, something like that. But the queen will move, that's, that's for certain. So let's see where the queen goes to. f7. All right, not my first choice. So how does it work? Well, knight g5 is obviously no threat. Uh, knight e5 can't be played, so it's just a nice solid move. It overprotects the d5 square, and it's maybe getting ready to play knight f6 also. Bishop c2. So both players are maneuvering now, and it looks as if Bobby's decided that 
he wants the diagonal for his bishop. So he either wants to get on this diagonal from here to here, or he wants to get on this diagonal from here to here. So it's either a4 to e8 or a2 to g8. Uh, personally, I think he's probably going to he's probably going to get head, head here with the bishop and place a lot of pressure on the d4 pawn, the d5 pawn, which is well blockaded. So this will be interesting to see how it develops. B6, Igor Kenkin is basically saying I'm going to develop the bishop and he wants to put it on either B7 or A6. Bishop B3, so this is all part of this plan of redeveloping the <coughs> light squared bishop. So it attacks the weak point on the D5 square. Now this, this move does have a threat and it's a pretty pretty good threat, alright. Let's say black does nothing. I'll just if we can give black nothing a nothing move. Let's say black does nothing. We've got that nasty threat. I'll just give this nothing move to black. I'm sure black wouldn't play a move like this. And we can see that bishop takes g7 is a problem straight away. If king takes, queen takes. Bishop takes d5, and you're hitting both the queen and double attack against the rook on a8 so this is an issue for black and black has to defend against it so black isn't going to play a nothing move like h6 black's going to play a sensible move that will help to defend this and decides that bishop a6 is the order of the day so now the two rooks are connected at the back that's very important and the bishop on a6 targets the f1 rook now, White's next move is a move that I didn't see at the board. For sure, I was watching this game and I thought, you know, White will play a normal move like Knight D3, just blocking, use the Knight to block the attack by blocking the diagonal. But instead, White play the ultra tricky Bishop E5, which is just good. You know, it's a good move. It, uh, it, it attacks the Bishop on D6, the Bishop. But the big attack is obviously from bishop on b3 to d5, which will pin the coin to the king, which is a forced win, obviously. So, black has to defend this, and a logical way for black to defend it was what they played, and they decided they were just going to defend the knight f6 pawn, the not d5 pawn with their knight. And notice that the move bishop takes f1 would have been severely refuted by bishop takes d, d5 virtually game over so knight f6 was the order of the day and the good thing about knight f6 is that it's overprotected by the knight on e4 which can go backwards as well as forwards so this helps to defend d6 and the knight on f6 